Today on Dude Grows Show, we got featured Grow Talk question. LEDs, man. Are we hanging them close, dimmed, or higher above the canopy, full blast? You dig, Scotty? Which one is it? What's going on? I oh. dig. All right. We'll see. We'll see. Where did I hang the sun? All right. Where does that come from? Nah, we'll see. You're Our rocking parameters. the sunglasses today. Come on, man. I, I don't fit in. And by the way, it's 95 degrees. If Scotty looks hot, it's because Scotty's hot. And then my wife just left these, so... Figured I'd wear them. How they look? With just don't leave anything around the house here, okay? Because I'll put it on. So, uh, they look good. They look good. So, I am. I, I, it's so hot here. I googled how far away am I from the equator. <laughs> no, you're hot when you start wondering that. Okay, I'm about the coastline of California away. Uh, for real, we will be talking about LED and the. Correct height to be hanging these from your cannabis canopy. Also, and what's going on? Good karma and choosing where to spend your hard-earned cash. So what is this? A little business business class? I tell you what, dude. This was inspired by you. Tell me what a great experience you had uh, with your mountain bike company, and I thought it was just a cool opportunity to remind people that there's people working really hard behind businesses. So I just thought it was a cool. It's just so cool to, to talk about now. Oh, business class reminded me of I was just at the airport recently and I was in line and some people were getting in line ahead. Of, I don't, there's so many different ways to pay your way ahead of line now at security, whether it's clear or this. And these people are like, uh, I forgot what the confusion was. They look over. I'm like, are you guys in the right? Am I in the right place? So I go, yeah, actually, we're ahead here. We actually paid to be ahead in line. I'm like, you know what? I'm, oh, yeah. I'm okay with that right now because I'm in no rush. So I'm okay with that. But there are times <laughs> that I'm not okay with it. It's exactly what I told him. There's times that I'm not okay. See, dude wouldn't let me put the fight at the In-N-Out Burger that's all over the internet on my to- on the Touch.0 Saturday show. He says, can't be Touch.0, but come on, that's good stuff. When they start fighting at the In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> and Does this mean I'm old so when I start doing this? When I just sit around sweating? And just pat? That means you're okay, old, right? right? No. <laughs> uh, Not today, um, today. A few things in the news. We've got recreational marijuana uh, to become legal in Delaware, despite opposition from Governor John Carney, who also they're not going to be allowing home growth. So let's talk about that, as well as Minnesotans might be able to grow up to 32 plants if the new law gets passed. Damn. Yeah, that's interesting, huh? Yeah, they got caregivers going and pretty interesting stuff. We'll see if we get to it, which I'm okay if we don't talk about the hop latent viroid. It sounds as bad as it is, really. It is bad. Oh, sorry. We, we won't get to the news of a, bi- a viroid <laughs> that's destroying the nation's cannabis. No, no biggie. Let's talk about our feelings were, instead, man, okay? I think, I think you were worried about it in your own grow, maybe. That's what's going on. Yes. Yeah, look at Grambo over there, man. Grambo's a thinker. Look at him, man. What's up, Grambo? Hey, living brother. Trying to think less, boys. I, I always hate when Scott says some accurate shit. That he's like, you look like a thinker. It's like, ah, oh, I think too much. How dare you be so right? <laughs> right. Scroll Facebook a little bit, man. My wife scrolls TikTok. She barely ever thinks when she's doing it. Who's having more fun, you or Mrs. Real? Fucking A right, uh, Bob. And- Fucking A right. In the comments, peeing on your plants, uh, just to have some fun and a little science, a little science into this. Wow, I feel bad. I made that one up last night while peeing on my plants. That's from me. Well, I mean, you notice there's a little bit different with all different types of, of pee. My dog, which is a, I think, is it females' uh, dog urine is what will kill grass more than a male's? Urine yeah, because. I, I can't remember what? one of the two. Yeah. But no, there's, there's, you know what it got me thinking about it is somebody's comment about nitrogen fixation. And I'm like, I wonder if, you know, there's plants that fixate nitrogen. I wonder if we fixate nitrogen. I guess so, because there's a lot of it, uh, a lot of it in your pee. I wonder what, there's no fertilizer nice. down here. All right, man. I'm back grassroots. I pee all over the place at my house just because there's no like, neighbors right next door but there's a lot you know walking around gardening and stuff you just drop you know throw a pee right there uh yeah but you ever do that and then you kind of look around and you make eye contact with one of the neighbors like from across the street or something yeah it's a little awkward (laughs) 
Well, before we hop into it, let me shout out to this episode brought to you by realgrowers.com. Check out your recharge and do go to realgrowers.com. Uh, that ties into uh, you know where you're spending your hard-earned money. Choose where you're spending your hard-earned money. If you could buy from the source, do it. Get some single plant bundles over there. Great way to try out Grow Dots and Recharge without throwing a ton of money at it. Single plant bundle for $19.95. We'll do two plants for a full grow cycle. Awesome idea. Yeah. Well, thank you. I'm not sure if it was mine, sir. But uh, yeah, those extended release are out. We're getting a bunch of people that are starting outdoors. As a matter of fact, we just did a piece of short form content or the Royal We. We did a piece of short form content this morning about three ways to keep rippers from uh, grabbing your uh, harvest this year, grabbing your plants this year. Nothing sucks more than uh, having people, you know, working for months on a plant and then coming over a couple of weeks before harvest and it's gone. And a lot of that has to do with trucking in, maybe not trucking in, but bringing in water, bringing in fertilizer, even stuff around. All that are clues, man. So I do like the idea of going in there once, throwing some fertilizer on there and being done with it. Okay. I'll have to check that out, man. I feel a little left out because I have some advice Ooh. on that. <laughs> you need to get the fan, the little hand fan on you. It is so hot, man. I can, it, it, it says, my watch says it is 95 degrees. 95 in the tropics. That's hot, man, all right? Doing it all for you guys. Scotty was trying to record inside the house there. And like, Your light's not good, man. You need good light. No. You have to suffer in the heat. Mm-hmm. Nope. If you guys want some recharge or grow dots in Canada, dudesworld.ca. And don't forget, if you're shopping for your grow, shop with the pros. Still feel like that's a Home Depot commercial, but it's not. It's dudegrows.com forward slash pros. They get coupon codes all listed for tons of great grow gear. Go check it out. Maybe you're shopping for your loved one and you will get a great thing off this list for the upgrade or grow. And I definitely have to shout out to some DDC producers. Also, man, making the show happen like Growers Wild and New York Danky. What's growing on? Growers Wild. I remember the Joker's wild, but come on, who doesn't remember girls going wild? Nobody. You'd see that shit on TV and it was like 17 years old. I'd be like, holy shit, man. Yep. They'd be after hours. Cool. Yeah. No, that was my pre-pubescent <laughs> girls going mind. wild. Girls going wild. Some comedian uh, had a great uh, joke. Uh, of like, it's like, no one wants women gone wild. Men die when women go wild. Girls gone wild. That's fun. <laughs> Ooh, that is great. That is great, man. All right, man. I'm too old for that shit. I'll just stay triked out, bro. I'll just stay triked out. All right. What's up, DDC producer? Triked out. Guys, dudegrows.com forward slash support is where you can become a DDC producer and get all the benefits. Come on. You've been sitting there, sitting back, chilling, enjoying Dude Grow Show. Step on up $10 a month or 33 cents a day. Membership mm-hmm. pays for itself. Hot deals. Too many to list from real growers to seeds. You're now free seeds. DGC Cup, 20% off your tickets, guys. DGCCup.com. Get your ticket if you're wanting to come. And if you're already coming, go to DGCCup.com. Sign up to be a bud tender. Hour-long shift. It's fun. Right on the homepage of DGCCup.com. You can sign up to become a bud tender. Uh, mm-hmm. And check everything else out at DudeGrows.com forward slash forward forward slash support join at this community hang out you're missing out on the friday shows in the discord the discord's like a whole nother world by the way whole nother <laughs> network really quality uh, uh folks and conversation hanging in there yeah i will say though and there's lots of people that just they they're not in a position to throw ten dollars a month down uh the folks that comment uh the people that leave a uh, great comment dr phil good who probably is a producer i have to check the list i oh, mean somebody like that that leaves amazing comments there is so much value in that that uh it's not only about the money just participate in the community it's about building the community oh yeah Grandpa. <laughs> hey, did you see the show did you show, see the show back where Grambo shredded on the guitar? If not, we got to watch it yesterday. Uh, it, I knew he shredded, but holy shit. Like Eddie, uh, you're like Eddie Van Halen over there. you like Eddie Van Halen over there. Yeah, man. famously, like I always say, I'm from Slipknot's hometown. So it really was one of those things growing up. It wasn't like your parents were like, you can't make money being a rock star. It's like the guy, like my guitar, my mom bought my first guitar from the guitar player Slipknot. Mick Thompson worked at the guitar shit's place is called yield guitar shop right by my house so yeah being a kid in Ah, it was like 
we should practice. We could be famous. Like we know people on Roadrunner Records. So unfortunately, the old booze got to my band. All we did is booze and fight, booze and fight. And eventually it's like, I'm going to move to Denver and become a comedian. Fuck you guys. But <laughs> they're uh, restarting my old band, Electric Assault. You know, uh, check them out. Des Moines, Iowa. They're going to start touring around again with a uh, Edgar Alfredo's replacing me out there. So yeah, check them out. But thanks for the shout out, Scott. I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't like electric assault. Okay. It's just a little, you know, it's just a little icky. Okay. Have them call me. We'll figure it out. Then. All right. Let's take it to Grow Talk, man. This is LEDs hang close and dim or high at 100% by Dr. Trip Tone with eight awesome hey. comments, man. This is why we post over on dudegrows.com. Community is helping out. All right. Let's see here. Do a little narration. Dudes. Happy 420 to the crew. Hope everyone is awesome. So a simple question. When using LED grow lights, is it better to hang the lights high on 100% and let the plants stretch into them or keep the LED as close as possible and dim it down? Then gradually raise the light as the plant grows and increasingly increasing intensity gradually. My experience, hanging closer and dimming had better results, tighter in nodal spacing. When I tried to grow in the light method, Plants were very stretchy, stems weaker and less yield. I would love to hear what you guys think about this topic. All right. Thank you very much. Obviously, that tiner, in, tiner internodal spacing is what we want on cannabis, right? You're going to have more flower. Absolutely. And, flower. and we talk about not enough light. Those plants stretch, not enough light. And we're talking PPFD in numbers here. Uh, and then the buds can be little and popcorny. And that PPFD, we talk about it. It's the amount of little light photons, little light raindrops that are going to, you know, uh, uh, fall in a certain space. What is it, a meter squared? Or is it a foot squared? I can't remember. Well, it doesn't matter. It's in a specific space, man. So that's the number we want to look for is PPFD. You want to see how many rain, you know, we got to get the right amount of raindrops falling on these plants to give them enough energy. And we'll do some, Dr. Feel Good, like, wrote the ultimate answer here. So I'll do some yeah. variation. And there's advice for everybody. Don't get intimidated when you say, but I don't have a PPFD meter. There's there's ways to do go about this. So Dr. Feel Good, thank you very much for helping out. Says there are several factors to consider when deciding how to hang your lights. But it mostly comes down to the density of photons in your space, which you just said, Scotty's PPFD. That determines the potential density of your buds at harvest. So if you have an appropriately sized light that puts out the right PPF for your space and headroom is not an issue, then the correct answer would be to keep the light at 100% and at the recommended height from canopy and move it up as the plant grows. Got it. So saying headroom is not an issue, meaning you can, you got, you know, it's not a tent with a five foot ceiling. You got room to, you got at least seven, eight foot ceilings in your grow space. Right. Right. Hey, Grandpa, just off topic, you mind uh, just AIing the art for Dr. Phil and Dr. Feelgood from Motley Crue and just merge them together and see what it looks like. <laughs> see what Dr. Phil Good looks like. I think I could do that. I think that might be fun. Let's play around. I'll do that later. <laughs> Good. In about 90 seconds. All right, so if you have a light, and if you, if any of you all have a pulse pro meter out there, you can measure this. So this is these are the numbers that you're looking for. If you have a light that puts out too much PPF for your space with no CO2 supplementation, I would dim it down to achieve a PPFD in the 700 to 900 range, and recommend hanging height over hanging height over pinning it to the top of 100 at 100 percent for a couple of reasons. So okay, is dimming it down to achieve that range and recommend hanging height. Okay, meaning that whatever the recommended hanging height is from where you bought it, overpinning it up at the top at 100%. Okay, firstly, grow lights are designed to cover a certain space. When you move out of their suggested range, you'll either lose coverage at the edges or when hanging them too low, you will agree. They, they have numbers. There's a reason they give you a specific you know, hanging height. It's because they've walked around with a uh, uh, light meter. And by the way, you were talking about light meters being real expensive and stuff. You can find them. There's one that hooks up to your phone, a true PPFD meter. I think you were telling me earlier, there's a video of uh, how to use a light. You can go get an app that's a light meter, and that'll tell you the basic brightness around. I think it's more like lux, you know, uh, light units, but I don't think it's telling you your PPFD. You know, I think it's just a general measure of brightness. So 
So be careful with your well, phone. We featured they have them for 80, before. 100 bucks. They've got PPFD meters on Amazon, but fuck Amazon. All right. We featured them before on the show. Um, there's a YouTuber, a YouTuber called Migro, M I G R O, that does great like measurements against um, different PP, different meters, and actually photon for iPhones, P H O T O N um, E, P H O T O N E. So it did awesome and it worked really well for measuring. I'm pretty sure it does PPFD, PPFD as well. So, Let's take it back. Hang on a uh, second. I'm trying to guru just called. All right. He says it does PPFD through a calculation. It's not doing true. It doesn't have the right sensors to really do that. So it's just doing it through a calculation of overall brightness. So just don't upset guru. All right. He's fishing right now. He's trying to come down. The app is accurate enough for what we're trying to achieve here as growers. Back to back to Dr. Feel Good. So secondly, if you're to hang an overpowered light too high, but still could manage a good PPFD canopy, then you would be wasting electricity. Makes sense. Uh, you could dim the light and bring it down to canopy and still get good, solid coverage. This is like my buddy that in veg, he does not run his lights above 50%. HLG 600Rs is what he has, eight of them. And his plants love it. And then he slowly dims it up to 100%. Within the at least within the first three weeks to thirty days of the first month of flowering, he wants to be at hundred. That's his style. Um, plants need more energy. I mean, they're starting to create flowers, right? They're needing all the energy they can get. So if you don't, well, it's a big much, deal. You- well, I'm sorry. Just let me pop in with DLI because we haven't mentioned that yet. And DLI is the daily lighting integral. It's the amount of light that your plant can absorb. So don't forget, at eighteen hours a day of veg. Uh, they're getting more hours of light. You know, they're getting, a, you know, the, the club's open for eight more hours, man. You know, when it's 12, 12, you've only got 12 hours to deliver that same amount of light or more light. So your ass wants to dial that shit up. And by the way, this yeah. directly correlates with CO2. That's what I was going to get. Oh, you're getting me upset, man. Why are you getting me all hot, man? <laughs> it CO2, down man. to PPFD. At the canopy, without CO2 supplementation, you get great results coming in at about 750. That's the number, plus or minus 100. Anything less than five or 600 on the PPFD, you are leaving a lot of weight off the table. Fact. Anything more than 900 is arguably a waste of electricity without CO2. And anything more than 1,000 without CO2 can really start putting the herd on the plants. So when you read this, it's like, yeah, it it makes you the investment in measuring your light with one of these meters is well worth it. I mean, especially if you're wasting electricity potentially or, you know, you don't have enough PPFD and you're like, damn. Um, And I mean, we're we're shipping around clones, man. Come on, get together with three or four of your friends. They're 100, 150 bucks for an inexpensive light meter. I'll let you know if mine's worth the shit or not. Shit, man, go buy a Pulse Pro between the the four of you guys for 125 bucks a piece and send that around to you, dial your room in. Uh, is that bad? I mean, buy one and one for your friend, too. Is that what we're supposed to say? <laughs> I like it. Pulse, if you are going to Pulse Grow, coupon code DUDE will hook you up over there. They might know their fortune yes. is over. Uh, All right. So... Moving on, the uh, design of the light makes a huge difference as well. You can see the bar style LEDs have several advantages compared to quantum boards. Many boards have to stay 18 to 24 inches plus. This is right. That's 600 R specs of quantum board. I kept mine yep. almost two feet off canopy um, since they run hot. Well, some bar lights can get as close as six inches and still remain adequate coverage and are a great nice. answer when a height restricted area. So I like that. Oh, man. I mean, this is such a resource. Shout out, man, Banner and Maestro. We're all going back and forth. When I cat cannabis, all working on the website this morning. This is such a resource, man. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for all these comments. I'm a doctor um, and a coach in the DGC. I've got Coach Steve coaching <laughs> me. I've got Dr. Phil Good for when it goes real bad, man. Somebody get me a doctor. Thank you very much. I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this, but just out of Scotty's request, I went ahead and tried to do it. So I don't know if you guys can see. We got uh, Dr. Mm-hmm. Phil in Motley Crew. Shout out, Dr. Feel Good. Oh, he's almost Mick Mars. He's, dude, that's <laughs> weird. If you want that, Dr. Feel Good, feel good, feel good, I will send that to you. It's ridiculous. It is weird, man. 
Let me uh, give a summary you'll like here, Scotty. Ideally, if you want the right size light for a, for a space and keep it dialed in during the whole grow, it says ideally that's what you want. Who wants to run on six or seven cylinders when you could be firing all eight? We want full horsepower during the entire grow, right? You definitely want to avoid stretchy plants at all costs, in my opinion. We want them strong and healthy the whole way through. Happy growing. Hashtag growers love. Right on. And thanks to uh, Maestro here, Triptone, Dr. Triptone, excuse me, Dank Seattle, Dr. Feel Good. This is everybody commenting, man. Giving her. Coach Steve, what's up? Wild Hair 85 and Ashley Green. This is why we post over on dudegrows.com, man. Thank you guys for everybody, growers, helping growers. And I will shout out to HLG Horticulture Lighting Group, guys. If you want to get some badass LEDs. And good people Sorry. to work with. We're about to talk about uh, spending your dollars with the right folks. Horticulturalidinggroup.com, coupon code DUDE over there will help you out. Check out their wide array of lights from anything from their 100 watt R spec, which is a badass little light for any <clears throat> clones, to a small two by two tent. You can flower under that light, uh, all the way up to commercial grow LEDs that'll rock your world. So shout out, Scotty. Sorry, man. Just says here, starting in 2003, Honda introduced variable cil cylinder management. Uh, Honda system works by de deactivating banks of cylinders, switching from six to four to three cylinders. Mercedes, Honda, and Volkswagen do it too. Wow, it goes, it's crazy, man. They, I knew there was somebody out there that was, some engines don't run on all cylinders, right? I've had some girlfriends to prove that shit. <laughs> What does that mean, Scotty? It means it wasn't all firing correct, bro. Okay. Friends, just friends. And then happened to be women. Uh, ain't it, man? <laughs> uh, what's going on with uh, grow stickers, dude? Anything? Have you guys printed stickers? Where are you supposed to print yes. stickers? We have, we have the voting going on now. It's still going on, I think, till Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so go check that out. And then we're getting them printed. We're getting the top... I think we're in the top three printed. Y'all can see, man. I, I always try to print more than uh, than he allows. Dudegrows.com forward slash stickers. And there is a form here. Do I call it a form? A way you can submit your favorite sticker design. Super easy to make these guys. And there's some, I love this one. No sticks, no stem, no seeds. Um, but yeah, hook it up. Dudegrows.com forward slash stickers. And we're going to print a bunch out, share them with DDC and everybody. Safe, tokable area. DGC approved. Nice. <laughs> There's good shit in there, man. Uh, okay. What's growing on, man? What's growing on? You can't say... You're... Don't pet the dogs. That's what we're starting it off with? Dude, yes. I just wrote that down yesterday. I was outside a restaurant. I mean, you know, those little seafood shack. Everything is you know, a couple blocks from the ocean. Everything is within walking distance. So maybe three, four blocks away from my house. I go outside the restaurant. I pet these dogs. Oh, they're so cute. And then I start walking away and they start walking with me, man. Three of them. And they just keep walking with me. There's nobody there to call them and stop them. I'm like, go, go. And uh, they walk me all the way back to my house. And then I go and close the gate. Of course, they just jump the fence and are hanging out. I'm like, dude, go. go. <laughs> They're staring at me through the sliding glass door, man. I mean, I was just like, all right, don't dogs. Okay. You're not in America. Okay. Yeah. Yes, they know. They know they so you got that. the goods. You know, if you would have given them any type of snacks, they probably would have never left. Probably just oh been your, God. your dogs just, forever. Yeah. I just said nice things and petted one, you know? <laughs> yeah, we'll say I've been here a few days and uh, I'm on the dab diet. I just deliberately haven't uh, went out and got any weed here. I've just been doing, have some really good dabs. And by the way, that aren't even outside because they will melt. I'm surprised a little bit on this spoon as it melted. Uh, but yeah, just going to take it easy. See if I can get my lungs back a little bit and I uh, feel good. Definitely feel, you can definitely feel the difference between smoking a few joints a day, two, three joints a day. And kind of doing as many dabs as you want. That's a problem when you do something like this. You hit a lot of dabs off this thing. What are you dabbing? You bring something with you? Uh, yeah. Uh, my brother Trip brought some really good extracts with him. I still don't remember what we bought. I don't remember the brand. I'm sorry. All good. All good. So let's take it over to uh, 
yeah, I guess we're calling it good karma and voting with your dollars, not voting with your dollars, choosing where you spend your hard earned dollars. You recently don't get on too good of a rant. I know Amazon's pissing you off. Um, Make me take off my shirt. That's what they'd say in high school, right? Before somebody kicked your ass. Don't make me take off my shirt. I mean, for me, it kind of depends. Taking it off already. What what you're buying and the convenience, you know, if I buy, for example, I do order this big thing of coffee off Amazon because I know I'm going to get it. I like to have some on backup and it's like $3 cheaper even than the grocery store. And they chuck it at me. Really? Yeah, I just I just bought some coffee for Banner at the local uh, the local roaster. roaster. You know, they they yeah, actually but, roasted them there. They they got they the do. beans earlier in the day. They went out and got them out of the forest. Yes, <laughs> rode a bicycle to the forest to get those beans, dude. All right, and I hear you, man. The there's an example. Fertilize. Look, you're you're giving a great example of obviously coffee can't be something that I'm just disregarding that should just be ordered on Amazon because there are local roasters and then there's people you meet and relationships that are created and flavors that are had. I get it. I get it. Um, but what happened to me was basically, you know, I would I would never buy a mountain bike, let's say on Amazon or online. You could down and where did you get your last mountain bike that e that electric one you got? You probably order that shit online. Order it online, yes, sir. That from a bike shop. So what's the difference? <laughs> they didn't have those bikes where I'm from. You know, it's a kind of a they're not selling a ton of them. And they had one in Oregon. And there is a person who maybe has a family in Oregon or certainly has a household that made money and didn't have to give Amazon 30 or 40 percent from it and got to keep that money and spend it in his community. So Yes, yeah, that's doing business with a. I don't know. That's not local, but only because of money. You don't go back to my community. And the, in the, I got a uh, Uber Eats yesterday, and inside of it was a thing that said, "Hey, we also deliver. We encourage you if you like our food, please use us instead of Uber Eats." And I was like, "Duly noted. Yeah. I shall order from you the next time I do." So, yeah, if you can avoid Amazon, do it. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but you know. that'll get you kicked right off Amazon. If they find that shit, man, you're done. Yeah, that's why I'm not disclosing the name of the restaurant just in case Uber's listening. Because, uh, yeah, I, I didn't name imagine names. that that was according to their terms of service. Yeah. I got to take it to my, my karma story and voting voting or spending, choosing where to spend your hard-earned dollars. I was down in Bellingham, Washington. Hey, and I spent mine on Louis Vuitton sunglasses. Yes. Fake $7 oh, ones from Chinatown, New York. Never over $40. No, there's seven. Dude, it's like in Chinatown, it's just all bets are off. Like, yeah, everywhere else you'll get sued like a motherfucker for selling fake shit, man. It's cool in Chinatown, man. I've been doing it for 40 years. I have two criteria, you hijacker, for sunglasses. They have to be polarized and they they have to float for at least... Slow or a slow sink. Mine are floaters that the the pads look. They, they when they fall off your head, yeah. they will sink in the water, but it's really really slow, so you can grab them. Just two tips if you're on the water. They need to float and polarized. Deal, deal. What if they just say Louis? Louis. No styles. That's, that's, like, that's what you need for South Florida. You know, styles like number five on my list. All right, back to what I was talking about. So I'm going down. Hey, to and wait, real quick, Grambo. The the uh, sunglasses I got you in New York though those are real. Don't say anything. Then I won't tell you I lost them in Texas Roadhouse last week. Oh, good, good, good. All right, that was better now, dude. Hijack over, sir. It's reminding me of my neighbor one time, really drunk, talk telling me about how his wife's ring wasn't real diamonds. I'm like, why are you telling me this shit? <laughs> oh, come on, that's fucked up. There's some serious <laughs> symbolism there, man. I just was trying to make Grandma feel. Good. Right. Don't lie about anything right. you can get caught about. That's the rule. <laughs> but, by the way, those sunglasses feel like they're like free ones you get at a concert, you know, from the bank or something. <laughs> yes, dude. My beloved 2017 mountain bike had a crack, uh, cracked its frame finally. Um, cause I always have to have two bikes, Scotty, two to bike on alternate between you got to keep on going. One has an issue. So I was cruising down to transition bike company in Bellingham. They're going to take care of me and warning to get, give me a loaner bike to go out from the day off the day on this badass network the karma came in i was getting all ready to go suited up got my dog out of the car ready to hit the trail and this nice old lady pulls up and i just hear you think you might know how to work this and i was like 
what you, what do you got going on? You know, and look over and she's like, I got a brand new phone. Like this car is pretty new. And it's all, I'm like, what, what year is the car? Is it 2023? I'm like, it's got to have navigation. She's like, I'm trying to get down to Seattle. My daughter's uh, pregnant and her car broke down. So I'm like, okay. I can Are you hitting on me? I don't like, I don't like ch- uh, technology to beat me. It makes me feel defeated and old. So I grab her phone. I'm messing with it. Her screen keeps timing out. So I'm thinking it's in the power settings and I actually can't really figure out the phone. I'm like looking in her car, telling her to try and hit different buttons and she's having trouble. Like, do you mind if I get in? She's like, please get in. And I get in the driver's seat and get it going, find the address, get her navigation. It took me actually about 10 minutes plus in my head. I was like, you should be going right. And then my other part of my head's like, what, what the hell are you in any rush for? Just help the lady out, man. Comes back around. Right. And she got her going. She's just like, God bless you. God bless you. Have a, have a ride. Have a great day. She was so excited. Uh-huh. So, uh-huh. Then it's I went like, on oh, a ride. That sounds Southern to me, man. That sounds Southern. <laughs> is that your, <laughs> that's your accent? What is a BC accent? There is no BC accent. There's the no. there's Canadian. There's, you know, a, and all that. Those are deadly, yeah. man. Deadly. But and is that BC? Is that how they talk? Because I mean, Canada is a big country. You know, they don't talk the same way they do in Texas. They talk in New York. Is that the same way? Yeah. It's pretty, you know, Newfie. You, you've heard Terp, Terp talk. If you're over there, if you're a Newfie. Newfie I don't think you're allowed way to the call hell that, Yeah. Uh, my buddy, uh, Mike, just Mike, was was uh, relocated to Newfoundland. And he would tell me it was a weird place. It's completely desolate. But just like there'd be lobsters on the shore. You could just walk up and grab a lobster. It was weird. And, you know. <laughs> so I had a great, great ride cruising back to transition. They got like. 30 different beers there, a bike shop, a bike mechanic. Like, I'm like in heaven. Dogs are welcome right, everywhere. They right. can do whatever they want. And uh, my bike comes out. They, 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 I knew they were going to like give me some sort of a deal. They're like, hey, we'll give you one of our 2017 carbon frames, which is a really nice frame. And it's $1,200 our cost. And then we got to swap everything over. So it'll be about $1,300, $1,400. Have some beers, sit down. My bike comes out, sit down to pay. And they're like, yeah, it's going to be $160, dude. And I'm like, okay, for what? Just parts? For your what, bar labor? tab? How much did you drink, yeah. man? <laughs> Um, that's undisclosed. And then, th- then <laughs> it's going to get a kid fun after a ride. Uh, regardless, I'm like, it's not right. I owe more than that. I didn't say how much I'm like, I owe more than that. David, the guy has helped me. says, I'm going to have to pay for the frame. He's like, David's still here. I'll go upstairs. The guy comes back downstairs. He goes, no, David says you're good to go. I'm just fucking elated. They're like, dude, total hookup, man. And then I'm just thinking in my head, like that. You remember the story about this one hitter in Maui, Hawaii? That was karma the same day. This one was karma the same day. It's working too good. I'm going to start going out and doing all kinds of random like acts of kindness and see how much it keeps coming back. Right. <laughs> you know, man, I got yelled at one time for calling it karma. That is my vision of karma or my idea of karma. I think as far as uh, there are other uh, you know, definitions of karma, it might not be it, but... I Actual karma is in the around. next life. You're judged in the next life when you reincarnate yes, for yes. karma. But this would be Thank instant you. karma. Thank you. Instant karma. It's going to get you. Well, I know. You tell me it's just doing good business, it's, right? I mean, that's a good business oh. move as well. Well, I was just going to say it works according to the rule of reciprocity. And reciprocity really is something that works in this life. When you're kind to people, people are kind back to you. Uh, you attract uh, uh, kindness. And, and yeah, I, I do believe in that. I think that might be a little bit more what this is. But no, I think this is him seeing you as legit uh, and saying, hey, you know what? I want to support a legit member of the community. Just I gave away a couple of real buckets uh, last week. And I was like, hey, man, if yeah. somebody is really into growing and wants to try these and is into it. I'll hook you up, man. You know, I do that all the time and it feels good. This was nice to be a business owner. You don't have to ask anybody's permission. I guarantee you that was the deal with him. I was going to say thank you for calling me legit because yes, I did disclose and it is take your time, whether you're trying to replace a grow light or whatever, to disclose maybe a little bit of your passion or why you're asking for this. Because David, the, the, the gentleman in transition that helped me out, um, you know, I, I sent an email being like, look, this is literally my sixth transition bike. I still currently own four. Here's my son's Instagram. He started off on a transition PBJ and look and look at him now. Really wanted to right. write, oh, yeah, this I'm involved in the community. We're sincere about it. 
And you're right, man. Hooking me up with that that frame has was been like first thing I did was tell everybody I bike with. Just look how cool this company is. Unbelievable. So word of mouth. How much do you think that press would have cost them? How much do you think that would have cost them to do? What are people hire influencers now to go out and talk about how great the companies are? Um, to have somebody legit a come back to their you know crew of riders. I'm sure you're going to tell this story everywhere. And then B, the guy didn't know, but the reciprocity really came back for him as to where you're telling several thousand people right now about what an amazing company transition is and how they treated you. Pretty awesome. And I just realized I'll probably, I should probably just send this over to transition. Thank you, David and transition. If you're listening to this and it ties into just, not just the fact um, of business, right? Doing this word of mouth spreads socially just as quick. You know, when you're doing good things, whether in your community or random acts of kindness, um, usually doesn't spread as quick as negative shit. Like, did you see what blah, blah, blah did? Of course, negative news is a little quicker, but, um, but that's just, I, that's just human nature, man. It's, we, we have been for hundreds of thousands of years or however long it's been taught to identify threats. You know, that's why uh, somebody drops a buck and you're like, oh, what the hell's that? You know, that's just human nature. It's tough to fight as much as I'd like uh, to. Or not to I see like here you, you have when do companies, when does a company become a sellout? Because Transition's motto is rider owned mm-hmm. for life. Like we own this company for life. You know, that's what, that's how we want to roll. But when yes. does a company become a sellout? I don't know. I, well, I think about Trek, right? Would you ever ride a Trek mountain bike? They're good quality bikes, right? Um, yeah, trucks, not, there's, yeah, why they're not and just because they're everywhere. They're everywhere. They have to, I don't know if they're American made anymore, but the volume that they're making, they've had to have changed from being a small boutique bike company, like transition, uh, to whether they had to outsource. And I don't know anything about track. So they had to outsource the you know the welding and the frame manufacturing to China or whatever. If, they offer a professional, you know, a mountain bike that you can actually use and go mountain bike. You can't go get a mountain bike from Walmart or from you know, <laughs> wherever and go mountain biking. You won't, it'll fall apart on you. So you making can. that accessible for instead of four or five thousand dollars for six or seven hundred. But yeah, you have to you have to get a made in China, you have to do all that shit, you have to pay people cheap. You know, I don't know. That seems like selling out. That's a fun. That's a fun uh, YouTube search for you guys out there. Walmart mountain bike. There's some professional mountain bikers. I think that like took them out. To see how that's long awesome. they last them. Um, but I mean, sell out. I don't know. I asked. You know what? I, every every company, every man has his price when they get approached. I mean, buyouts happen all the time. That's Is that what you're talking? Every man doesn't have his price. What do you mean? There's so many things that I wouldn't do for money. And dude, I. I'm very comfortable. I'm happy. I don't need any, I don't need to do anything that I wouldn't want to do for money. Hopefully. <laughs> I like it. You're like, thank, thanks. Thankfully at the end. Yes. I, got well, I mean, yes. desperate times. I get it, man. When you, you know, desperate times, but, uh, no, nah, thank God. I'm, I'm actually able to. You know, do you have a worse job in your history? I'm, I'm out of curiosity. Do you have a job that was just like, dude, Never it was the worst physical job, but it was super fun. It was in the heat laying up boats. When they make boat holes in Florida, large fishing boats, they have an, a mold, a giant mold, and they will literally spray it. They'll spray it with this gel coat stuff, and they'll spray it with fiberglass, and you have to go through and roll on the fiberglass. Yeah. This bird. I'm trying to do material here. <laughs> All right. Good, good, good. Uh, but in the hot sun, spraying fiberglass and, and rolling fiberglass, that was by far the worst job I've had. I think for me, it was just, uh, I had some hard labor jobs, but like you said, it was like labor, labor of love doing, you know, I did tree work industry for a while, but when I worked at a few, I worked, I don't know if you've heard of Fuddruckers. I worked at Fuddruckers once, yes. <laughs> I worked at a restaurant, uh, shucking oysters cleaning up like uh, just the restaurant industry oysters is messed up and that's hey, by the way this you can't ignore the fact that fud rockers was originally called mother fud rockers come on isn't this that's ridiculous right <laughs> and if you recall what they were called in idiocracy. in idiocracy yeah I was just about to say. <laughs> i'm not sure shout out not sure oh 
All right. Well, good, good, good stuff. Yes, and good man, stuff. I want to take it to, we got news to hit up here. You had a comment. Um, so let's move on to, uh, well, first I did want to shout out to the pros list guys. It's another reminder. If you're shopping for your grow, do grows.com forward slash pros. All the coupon codes are listed there and dgccup.com. Get your tickets June 3rd for yes. Collins, Colorado, over 50 strains to try. Everybody's a judge. Everybody come and gets a custom DGC one hitter lighter and ready to pote. All right. Yes. So I've got a couple of produ- producers here making this possible. Will you, you wipe your sweat off swimming in the Oh, deck. my God. You know, hang on one second. I'll have a frozen decore. Thank you. And blaze it up. What's going on? Thank you for helping produce this show. Stay tuned for the after show. We got some dank nugs to feature and some seeds to hook up to DDC producers. Who do you got, Scotty? Yes. I don't know. I feel like I could party with this girl. Happy Heathen Jill. All right. Like every one of those words. Dude, dudegrows.com forward slash support is where the info is. Come on over. Be real DGC. Yeah. Uh, comments. Yes. Where'd you get comments from? Red eyed red eye dot red eye DDC rocks. I just no, I just got to uh just I, I gotta calm down with the comments, man. I was reading them last night and I read this one. I was like, what's up with this guy, man? Dig rocks. Who the hell somebody that did, you know, I'm like, why would you comment for somebody and just say dig rocks? Like, what did I say to this guy? And yeah, I put the glasses on and it said DGC rocks, man. I went from <laughs> to, uh, oh, this guy rocks, but thank you, Red Eye. I got to be more careful. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, my first impression was like dig rocks. Who says that to somebody, man? Wow. You're just, uh, you're tricky, this is from like Annie. Dig- Oh, sorry, man. I'm, I'm, I got a couple that I lined up, man. Annie and Dr- you got to admit, there's a lot of syllables. And Dracovic, is that how you say? I hope I say it the DGC copy. You teach me how to say like your that. name. It says, hey, Scotty, can you do a deep dive video on cloning? Remember, we did that perpetual harvest video last week. Yeah. We, we got a request to do one on cloning. There's a few re- we should do it. Yeah. There's definitely a couple things to, uh, uh, to do right with cloning. So I've been a grower for five plus years and cannot clone. My cuts always turn black with no roots or just shrivel up. We can fix them. Uh, I can then breathe like a badass. You can say bitch, like a badass bitch. Okay. But I can't clone. Please help. So yeah. Like All right, if you're deal. doing Coming a video, ch- I'll take the, I mean, take the challenge, How, like seven minutes or less. A deep dive into cloning, I think it'd have to be like a couple part series. It's kind of tough to give unless you're showing one method. If you're like, look, this is the method I want you to use because there's a lot of different methods to clone. You know what I'm saying? Healthy, well hydrated plants, uh, use rotting hormone, cut your, uh, soak your cubes in a cloning solution, um, get a good dome that seals really well, spray them. Uh, <clears throat> don't make me do a shameless plug for put a little recharge in there in the, in the plugs, but, uh, it's not that hard adjusting, maybe having the light, uh, the right distance away to make mist on the, on the clone dome and to keep those clones happy, heat mat, stuff but like make that. Sure you gotta, make sure you got a nice heat mat, keep the temperature up. Oh, that would be the biggest uh, tip that I would do, man. Once I got my heat mat under there, my cloning game just got simple. All right, I'll, I like it. Uh, we'll have more detail in a grow short coming at you shortly. So yes. and I have inside Cody, information that Anne will be at the cup. I talked to her not too long ago. She will be there. Not a deal. So the E is silent. Is that what you're telling me, man? Actually, no, I'm illiterate. So I don't know. It could be Annie. could be Ann. I'm not sure. But right. we'll find out. Well, the Y in Scotty is sometimes yeah. silent. So hey, this is kind of cool. Yeah. Cody Scott Rose. Uh, the roots, leaves, and <clears throat> excuse me, the roots, leaves, and flowers of the dandelion are pretty much all similar and, and pretty much all similar lookalikes are edible and extremely healthy too. And then Roger, which it's probably the best name I've heard so far. Roger Correct. with an accent mark. Go ahead. Uh, dandelions only grow in low nitrogen lawns. It's a nitrogen fixer. Very cool, hey, man. I, I got a lot of dandelions right now going off. So I think I am going to go out there uh, when I'm out there this weekend because uh, strawberries are really cold hardy. And I have a bunch of strawberry baskets to get going, Scotty. Do you do any strawberries? I grow a lot of strawberries. They're good. Do you? No, I don't, man. 
I don't. The animals usually get them. I'm boring. I grow those peppers. Pretty fun to grow. And, and yes, strawberry sir. baskets. You have decking strawberry baskets. That's why I do baskets, man. It keeps the predators at bay a little. Except a pair. One time, a pair was literally standing on his hind legs eating some more fucking strawberries. Like you bastard. <laughs> Dude, I will look you right in the eyes through the screen and tell you, man, that's one of the things that always impressed me about you. I would go to your house. You would have beautiful plants all over during the spring and summer. You would have fruits all over. And like it was just like, you know, just a natural thing. It was really cool. Was your mom a gardener? Were your dad's gardeners? Did you grow up with plants? My dad didn't garden much. My grandpa did. My dad had house plants. I loved habaneros and heat. So I grew a couple habaneros one year when I was like in high school on the deck and then literally grew tropical plants indoors a little bit. Always. I always had one in my room. Interesting. Even as like throughout high school, but it was cannabis. We always say cannabis is the gateway, not just to get in your own good sure. weed for cheap. Gardening, uh, growing other shit if you want to, man. I got my shishito, shishito peppers. A lot of those coming. If anybody's into culinary peppers out there, the shishito is pretty dope. But this isn't that show yet. Peeing on plants. Um, okay, peeing on plants. Where, where'd you get this from? <laughs> Don't ask where I pulled it from. All right, man. <laughs> I was doing the comments yesterday, and uh, yeah, I was just hanging out, and I started thinking about the NPK. Uh, just, you know, I'm down here where they don't use a lot of chemical fertilizers. I'm down in Costa Rica and they don't use a lot of, they have the flora and the fauna. They have the plants and they have the animals and there is a symbiosis between the two of them. So I just started thinking about dandelions being nitrogen fixers and how there's, whether it's animals that eat them or uh, uh, whether they just rot but, and, and microbes eat them, but them just taking that nitrogen that there's, we need nitrogen is the macronutrient or one of the big macronutrients we need for growing plants. And that's so cruel that the air all around it is 70 something percent nitrogen, but it's locked up with other nitrogen molecules. Like that's even more of an effing tease, right? Yeah. Now we just bond three microgen molecules, nitrogen molecules together and make them too big for you to eat. You know, that's, yeah, that's, a, that's weird. So it's just amazing that these dandelions are able to, uh, uh, to fix it. Ugh, to fix eight to fix to fix the nitrogen, and we do the same thing. We eat the foods, and so, you know, it looks like the 0. 0.6 NPK. It looks like well, it says there's a ratio is about eleven parts nitrogen to one part part phosphorus and two and a half parts potassium. So uh, it would I say an eleven one two point five, but when they do those NPKs, those are based on a hundred pounds of material. So it really comes out to be a 0. 0.6, 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2. Mm-hmm. It's fertilizer. I know where they make it. It's interesting. And you found an official paper from the Rich Earth Institute using urine as fertilizer in home gardens. Come on. If Grambo can make, uh, you know, Dr. Phil and Dr. Feelgood into a person in 90 seconds or less, there's going to be an article about peeing on you. You have to wait at least one month, Scotty, after fertilization to harvest crops that are to be eaten raw. You have to wait a month. Okay? Oh, please. Fake news. Oh, I don't know about that. That sounds quite the time frame. Um, they don't want to get pretty sued. interesting. <laughs> yeah, you're in a sterile, actually. Oh, all right. Let's take it to uh, the the yeah. You you get oh. there. That sweat there. And I'll, let's get into the oh, news. so hot, yeah, man. It is 95 degrees, guys. 95 degrees. Grandpa's going to make me look good. He's got a filter. It's going to make me look good. Is that the... I'll put uh, you in Molly Crew. That's what we do. Please. <laughs> is that Not a lower, good. A lower temperature time of the year by the equator? Or it's always just blazing? Yes. Yes. Not now. <laughs> Let's take it to the news out of, this is a Philly, phillyvoice.com. You're going to get hungry, Scotty, for your cheesesteak. Yes. Recreational marijuana to become legal in Delaware, despite opposition from Governor John Carney. John Carney does not like this. Delaware will become the 22nd state to legalize recreational marijuana. Um, he said, despite Carney's opposition, who will not sign the two-bill legislation, however, will allow it. It's like, I'm not going to sign it, okay? But it'll... But I'll let you I'll let it come through. 
I'll um, allow so it. How's- but I won't approve it. This is uh, supported by more than 60% of Delawareans. Interesting word. House Bill 1 will remove all penalties for use or possession of marijuana and marijuana accessories. It is established that adults 21 or older can have up to an ounce in their possession. Personal weed must be in a closed container while in a vehicle. And smoking in public is still illegal. As well as growing plants, which blows, man. Uh, Anything that is not allowing grow is just... uh, it, it is, you know, work your way, work your way back. Um, yeah, then the governor you need to do something ahead. like like Minnesota. Have you seen what Minnesota's doing? You said thirty two plants. They're going. They're going to. It's all I'm thinking about. I'm reading this right now. Hang on a second. Let me see. Oh, I, I clicked the wrong one. Pardon me. There's a couple. Well, here, let me finish quickly. The governor, yes, because this is still how uh, just weird minded people are. The governor didn't want to support this. And then in quotes, it says, I do not believe that promoting or expanding the use of recreational marijuana is in the best interests of the state of Delaware, especially for our young people. Questions about long-term health and economic impacts of recreational marijuana use, as well as serious law enforcement concerns remain unsolved. And this is what he's concerned about, which you can tell me, I don't fully get this. I'm remain concerned about the consequences of recreational marijuana industry in our state. I'm concerned, especially about the potential effects on Delaware's children, on the safety of our roadways. And this is kind of interesting and our poorest neighborhoods where I believe a legal marijuana industry will have a disproportionately negative impact. Bro, but this is Delaware, right? I don't think Delaware is known as being the, uh, uh, you know, there's not a bunch of, a, put it this way, I think there's a bunch of ghettos in Delaware. They're not, man, a bunch of really bad neighborhoods. So I don't know that uh, he's the guy that we should be listening to about helping poor, you know, poor communities. Yes, how would marijuana industry have a negative effect on the poorest neighborhoods? It just confuses me. It just sounds like some BS. That does. Maybe uh, they're making good money slinging weed over there now. <laughs> He's on the back. He's getting a kickback. I see what's up. <laughs> right. That's actually a good point. Uh, That's the only way it's going to hurt the things like, oh, we're taking away the black market. That's going to hurt the poor. Mm-hmm. B, cool B. Okay, so moving on. And and that's just, we always tell you guys reading this shit, if you guys have a, a reason to vote against something for growers rights go to the meetings if you can sometimes there are definitely meetings you can go show up at city council meetings and shit like that i've gone to one in fort collins i don't know if you went to that one scotty when they were talking about different grow allowances and whatnot and you had the option to speak i can't remember if i spoke or not um but regardless what did you else did you find here in the news i just I was looking at minnesota and so minnesota's got something and uh, actually one of our grow stores in minnesota i was talking to a nice guy kenny about it says under the, they've got a, a new law that they're trying to get in uh, past the house. Under the law, a person over 21 is allowed to possess up to two ounces of marijuana in public and one and a half pounds at home with lower THC limits for cannabis concentrates. It allows members of the public to grow up to eight plants, which is, uh, yeah, it seems like they also have caregivers in that. But that's from last week, right? That article's from last week. When I'm Googling it, I find this one from May 24, May 14, 2021. House lawmakers advance adult use marijuana legalization. And it's a, a different one. Like how many of these do they do? When do they die? And you know, it's, it's pretty crazy, you know? And they, they just keep on happening. It has to pass the Senate after this. And I think it doesn't have to get approved by the governor. There is a lot of like quote red tape, if you will, but I think this year and next year we're going to see more shit passing than ever. I hear what you're saying. There's been a lot of back and forth, passed by one, not passed by the other. Is the governor going to sign it, depending on what type of level of government you're at? Um, right. But, yeah, I think we'll see more. Just yes. hopefully more grow grow passes. My biggest fear in my crystal ball that I don't have is that uh, federal legalization brings upon less grower rights. That's what we can't see. Remember, dude, apathy is not the same as withdrawing in disgust. And what is this pertaining to? Politics. Okay. <laughs> Paying attention to anything that's happening in the or this. 
Shit. Let's take it to the, the grow news here, man. Experts sound alarm over spread of dangerous marijuana viroid. Okay. Viroid. This thing is. needs a rebrand, right? It does sound like a pain in the ass, right? Latent viroid. It's been on the radar of many marijuana growers since its discovery in 2018 and has spread beyond North America and is threatening to spiral out of control and cause billions of dollars in industry losses. Experts are warning. Okay, so I'm assuming you can avoid this by doing culture tissue and keeping clean genetics, although. Yeah, I mean, come on. It is so hard. You get something from someone that has uh, this viroid and it shows up. Man, that's a that's a, a bummer. And I mean, there's not much you can do. This thing is like psycho contagious and it's really being spread we were talking about uh when you uh send other plants commercial nurserymen they have to get these phytosanitary certificates up uh, a clean plant certificate and to send plants out for testing uh regularly and that's if you're shipping over state lines and it's a big deal if you don't have it no and maybe yeah, they need something like problem. that for cannabis Talking how much cannabis users have been spreading this just over the past 20 years, the cannabis industry. Oh, yeah, mailing clones. Clones. Yeah, shipping clones around. Small and stealthy. The viroid experts warn the viroid is stealthy. It's also very small, asymptomatic, and waiting for an opportunity to infect a plant. Damn. So uh dangerous, yeah, man. There's not a lot of not a lot of upside to this, just something you got to keep an eye on. And I guess what is trying to chase things. Stadium? The worst is if you're a grower and you don't know you have it and you're chasing a problem mm. and you can't exactly yeah. figure out what the hell's going on. That's a nightmare, man. Yep. That is crazy. Yeah. It says um, that there's yeah, this- no environmental circumstance that can affect it. You either have it or you don't. That's scary. There's absolutely nothing you can do. It's check the box or don't check the box. Yikes. It says Dark Heart is working on a genetic test. Uh, this is differentiating affected from unaffected. We're also trying to develop a patent pending cleaning process to eliminate the viroid from its, that's just, that's just bringing it back to the, you know, tissue culture and immerse them. Um, imagine going to the hydro shop and being like, hey, I think I got this. And then here, here, go, here's the description. I'd be like, well, you know, it's uh, the pathogen is in the seed. It's not on the seed. Hey, it can also spread on the hands of the growers, handles, uh, tools, Anything, everyone infected, uh, oh, even infect one infected plant brushing up against another can transport the viroid. Any sort of sap sucking insects that make a hole in the plant can transplant mm, the viroid. That's a big deal. The viroid could be airborne, it can be in the roots, it can be in the soil. It's like, dude. So if you have Rambo, this, you're a comedian. How many viroid jokes did you make if I gave you an hour? I mean, at least a solid head. 10 minutes, right? <laughs> I mean, this does sound like plant herpes. I think of this as herpes. Ugh. It's yeah, it really is. Well, yeah, I've herpes got, is I a mean, virus. You're right. It just comes up. that you get right. herpes from sap sucking insects, don't you? <laughs> oh, we're running fast oh, and loose today, aren't we, man? It is. I'll transition on Sorry. that, which is good one. Good one, Grandma. We're, we're trying to get Grandma might be doing what? What's a set? 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes at the DGC Cup. How long can you go? No. Ouch. I done muted myself while you guys were giving me compliments. I done muted myself. But, yeah, you never know. We'll see what's coming on. I'm writing some roast jokes for you guys uh, while we're doing voting. We got to have some sort of entertainment. So uh, my buddy John Mags from Church of Cannabis will be coming up. I'm sure we'll have some fun stuff to do. Like roast jokes when you say, hey, like, how much you like me and how nice of a person I am and stuff. Is that what you're saying? Oh, you gotta <laughs> like your bosses so Make much. Make me storm out. <laughs> All right, I'm out of here. Before the, before the memes uh, and some social media, I want to shout out to DGC producer Hippie, please. And Missy Bumbles. What's going on? Missy Bumbles. Wow, that's a pretty cool name, right? Go, go like over it. to the bar ask for Missy Bones. All right. You'll be fine. That. That's all you need to know. Stoner Smurf, Dank Arts AZ. 
I don't care. I'm taking Snuggins. 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 I'll take it. I'll take Jimmy Shrine. Thank you, DGC producers. And thank you for making the show happen, guys. Definitely appreciate it. And Let's I believe that's uh, Snuggins. Beams. I believe that's Snuggins, just to make sure that we don't get yelled at by the View Askew fans out there. Well, we's always little Snuggins to me. <laughs> Let's get down with some Snuggins. Uh, uh, memes. It sounds delicious, doesn't it? <laughs> I get the chocolate flavored Snuggins. <laughs> marshmallow Snuggins with marshmallows. It's too hot for Snuggins we, tonight, man. We got Brack to the Future over with memes. I picked this one titled Jeopardy. Um, we're just looking at a guy, Alex Trebek. Um, and it says the, the, the category or the question is the most important consideration when buying weed from a dispensary. And the answer is what is one. THC percentage? No, no. What is terpenes was your answer. What is terpenes? Oh, I did. Oh, yeah. I love <laughs> Is what Drew Carey's doing that now for Alex Trebek? He's no longer with us. No, uh, remember Ken Jennings that won all the money back in the day? He's the new Alex Trebek. He's no Alex Trebek. Yeah, well, Drew Carey's no uh, Bob Barker either. So take what we can get. Barn. Yes. There should be classic prizes, right? So Bob Barker makes everybody kiss him. That's good. No, no, that was uh, the other guy, the family feud. Richard Dawson. This guy showed me that. He's like, pull up a video where he kisses all the women. I was like, oh, I know he kisses the women. He's like, no, watch. It's like, oh, it's so funny. the 70s it's so was funny. different. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Music, dude. Almost lost, almost lost power there. I was just looking at, uh, uh, I didn't know if it could, uh, another good Google search for you. Cheech. Cheech from Cheech and Chong did really good on Jeopardy. Like, really good when he was on Jeopardy. Like, well, he beat like a bunch of super smart people. I had that as a best of social yeah. media. We one talked time. about that on he, the uh, real bank. Show Anderson Cooper and Aisha Tyler that are both like Anderson Cooper's Harvard. Can't remember where Aisha Tyler went, she but was it was some place. Yeah. How the hell do we remember that? Yeah. And that was, that was from the real bank show. Memes. We get really high on the real bank show and uh, sometimes things stick uh, in. Uh, it went in there somewhere. It went in there. Uh, what else do you find, Scotty? Oh, I don't know. This is heat stroke, Scotty, here, man. Uh, <laughs> check this out. This is 420 Stash by Lawn Cobra. Oh, Let's I picked this look. one. We're looking. <laughs> yeah, I like this one. Oh, you put it on there? Nice. Yeah, I like this one. It's taking me out of jokes, uh, man. He's just got a, yes. instead of the torch, he's got a giant joint. It says, I see you looking at my stash. Happy 420. What I like? What's that actor's dude. name? How dare I forget? Harrison Ford. So, what's your favorite Harrison Ford uh, d- d- movie? His favorite uh, a- character? Uh, yeah, there uh, should be an obvious answer. Yeah, at least, I mean, it's got to be Han Solo, right? Han Solo was the cool guy. He yeah. was a cool guy in Star him, Wars. Him and Chewie hanging out, man. Him and Chewie hanging out, and I really, the, I mean, Decker from Blade Runner, man. Decker from Blade Runner was a great one. Oh, good flick, dude. Blade Runner, you seen it? Uh, I mean, isn't that supposed to take place in like 2001 or 1993. I think it was 2019. It's like way it past. It's 2019. Yeah, something like that. Yes. Yeah, or no, I think that was back to the future. The Millennium Falcon. The, the Millennium Falcon was, was my style because it was like, it's pretty legit. It was pretty reliable when it was running. Like it could, it could, it could, Turbo man, if you get into that hyper mode, but it wasn't always there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but... oh yeah. I don't know why. Meanwhile, oh, yeah. his description is like when it was years. running, it was good, man. <laughs> Dude, oh, click on these. Where are we at? Last thing, click on these. Would you smoke this joint? You might smoke oh, those nice. joints, man. That's how you smuggle them into the airport. It's 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 high heels with joints in. <laughs> yeah it's pretty cool yeah that's funny right that's pretty awesome i will no. say that's what you do with fuck you money 
Have you ever seen at the airport, like in the scanner, like I know how, what my bag looks like when I pack it all full of kinds of crazy shit, how they, like, what are you looking for? Like it just, scanner just looks like, it's just weird, man. I'm like, you gotta be able to have some stuff going by, but it is, I will tell you solid type metal shit. Cause I had my mountain bike pedals with me one time and they, they pulled me for that, but it's kind of a trip. Uplog got right through. Yes. <laughs> All right, are we, are we getting ready for the after show or what else do you got here? Oh, we better, man, because freaking hey, man, I'm withering to nothing. So. Let's take it. Let's do it, man. Let's uh, wrap this. We got an after show to hang with the DDC producers. Uh, stay higher, DGC. Hey, if you're a producer, head on over to Patreon and check the after show. Let's hook up some seeds. Look at some weeds. Are you going to make it, Scott? <laughs> yeah. All right, man. I'm sorry. Take her easy, dude. I'm just looking. I we gotta show some of this shit on the rap bar, on the on the after show. Tell me when we're ready. Let's do it. Let's check it out. We're ready.